F1 develops. B1 develops, displacing F1. Small F1 develops shortly after. Small F2 and B2 forms. F2 appears. F3 appears. F4 and F5 appears at the same time. These are the parameters observed at critical taper angle. From a 3D observation standpoint, we see that F1 to 5 each form a pop scarp on the surface. Forks can be modelled by straight lines when they are just formed. Over time, these forks deform and curl. This is evident from F2. As such, we analyse how the forks deform after the curve, specifically whether the dip increases or decreases as the wedge continues to shorten instead of comparing dips of forks over time. Now, let's look at our results. After analysing our major four trusts, F1, F2, F3, F4 and F5, we noticed some trends. Let's first turn our attention to the graph. F1 is represented by the blue line, F2 by the orange line, F3 by the grey line, and F4 and F5 by the yellow and purple line respectively. This graph plots the fault dip with respect to time. We see that there is gradual stiffening of the fault as the deformation continues. This is especially clear in F1, 2 and 3, which clearly ruptures through all given layers of sand. The trend is not as distinct for the F4 and F5 major trust. This is possibly because these faults are shorter and do not originate from the same deco mod. Larger decrease or smearing is also evident between the layers, which prevents accurate analysis of the deep angles. Similarly for the back trust, B1 and B2 are represented by the blue and orange lines respectively. The trend of increasing fork dip with shortening is not observed very clearly. Dip of B1 remains relatively constant, or B2 shows a steadily increasing trend before decreasing sharply near the critical paper. Sand loss through the backstop due to experimental error has caused a great amount of loss in sand that could have hindered the formation of new forks. The numbers could also be prone to random errors in measurement. In our analysis, we directly compared our final sandbox to those of groups 1, 2, 3, and 8. First, we compared with groups 2 and 3 with different decomon dip. From this slide, we see that a steeper dip seems to imply a large critical taper angle and greater shortening. However, the percentage increase in wedge thickness seems to decrease, which contradicts the greater shortening that is observed. This could be explained by parallax error and sand loss, especially for our own model, or it could also be explained by the shape of our final wedge. The relationship between the common dip and critical taper angle is given by the following equation. We can assume that the base of friction coefficient is constant because the material properties are the same across sandboxes, while k is assumed to be constant for small angles because beta is smaller than 5. It can therefore be seen that the critical taper angle will increase when the decommon dip increases. The thickness of the sand is hypothesized to be directly related to the number of faults that rupture. However, this is not seen in our analysis of the thickness of the sand with group 8, with our wedge having roughly the same number of faults as our wedge that started with 3cm thickness. A direct comparison between other models might help in our analysis. We postulated that using sandpaper with different grit would change the base of friction of decomon. However, we do not know how base of friction is related to grit. In this case, in our comparison with group 1, although a sandpaper with a small number has larger grit, and we would hypothesize therefore greater friction, the amount of shortening and thickening does not seem to vary significantly. What are some of the limitations to our experiment? There are several limitations to our experiment. The first limitation is the small sample size and the lack of controls. 
Each experiment was conducted with different values for each parameter, and therefore, we are unable to determine to what extent our results are based upon random error. Having had to conduct our experiment a second time due to bad imaging quality and significant parallax error for the first trial, we have realised that random error in the distribution of our faults cannot be ignored. Although we may be able to predict how variations in one parameter may be able to affect the final results of our experiment, say for example, how the dip of the decorment is directly related to the critical taper angle, we do not yet have the significant clarity on how varying multiple parameters at the same time may interact to give us a final result. The second limitation is our choice of medium as an analog to natural rocks. According to Lohman et al., there are many different factors that can influence the frictional properties and shear stress relationship of sand. This would add existing complications onto an already complicated experiment due to the fact that sand is not a glue material. In Lohman et al., it can be seen that the shear stress relationship of natural rocks is typically different from that of the granular analog materials that are generally used in sandboxes, and thus, there may be many drawbacks to using sandboxes as models. Could you elaborate further on how this is relevant to our experiment? In our experiment, we poured our sand into the sandbox and layered it out into even layers before conducting the experiment. However, pouring con produces undercompacted materials which could result in convex geometry that is seen in the shape of our final accretionary prism and in many of our faults. It is also worth noting that the strain hardening and softening due to the non coulomb nature of sand material we are using also can result in diffuse faults, which is why we see that initially, even our faults that could be modelled as straight line intersections on the glass, when projected directly to the surface, never actually coincided with the actual location of the fault scarp that is formed. A third limitation is due to sand loss at the backstop. From our pictures, we see that this loss of sand is relatively significant, especially in the later stages of our experiment. This outlet that allows loss of sand changes the compressional stress experienced by the sand, which will affect the back thrust that formed near the backstop. Analog modelling of accretionary prisms at tectonic convergence is important in our understanding of such systems. However, it is important to note that analog modelling carries with several limitations because it simplifies the natural system. This can be seen in the curved nature of our faults in our model due to strain hardening and softening. By and large, sandbox models are still useful as they simplify complex formation processes of accretionary prisms via easy-to-make laboratory experiments. 